Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 4K, where we're going to talk briefly about cancer risk factors. We'll talk about both inherited factors and environmental factors that can increase the risk of the mutations that cause cancer, and we'll pay a special attention to an underestimated role of bad luck. So it's well established for a number of cancers that inherited alleles play a substantial role in risk. Um, in general, though, these are not very common cancers. But we discussed in um, the previous lecture how inherited alleles can affect the consequences of new mutations. So the, if we inherit a loss of function mutation, in a gene whose job is to control cell growth will be phenotypically normal because such a mutation is usually recessive, but we're at higher risk than other people because all it takes is one more mutation in the other allele of that gene and we have a cancer cell. Another way that inherited alleles can affect cancer risk is we may inherit mutations in alleles that directly control our mutation rate. So mutations in um, DNA repair processes, in mismatch repair, for instance, can increase the risk of developing cancer because they increase the mutation rate. Now, we see a lot of attention played to the role of the environment in cancer. These are the subject of newspaper headlines all the time, especially in the sleazier kind of newspapers like the Sun and the Daily Mail. Um, lots of emphasis on, oh, this gives you cancer, that gives you cancer, this food prevents cancer, this activity increases cancer risks, reduces cancer risk all over the place. Everything gives you cancer. It's true that environmental factors can influence the risk of mutations, and those influence the risk of cancer. And we've talked about, for example, we talked about the role of ultraviolet light causing DNA damage, which has, because of error-prone DNA repair polymerases, this DNA damage is likely to produce mutations. We also know that radiation, of course, can cause mutations, again, by causing DNA damage. We tend to worry about things like x-rays or exposure from power plants or something like that, which is very tiny. We give much less attention to the unavoidable background radiation um, from the Earth, from cosmic rays, and particularly from radon gas. Now, in case you don't know, radon gas is produced by many of the rocks in the soils, and in open environments, that gas just dissipates. But in closed environments, such as houses, especially basements, that gas is trapped, and it can have a dramatic effect on mutation rates, effects that are as high as the effects of smoking on mutation. So people living in very high radon environments have higher risks of lung cancer because they're breathing in this radioactive gas. Um, smoking, of course, causes cancer. Viruses also cause cancer. This is hepatitis B virus, uh, a liver virus that causes cancer. Um, there's also other viruses that cause cancer. In particular, there's human papillomavirus, um, which causes cervical cancer in women, and throat cancer in people who are exposed to it through oral sex. We have a vaccine for this virus, not because the virus causes direct harm to us, but the vaccine is to prevent the cancers that the virus puts us at risk for. Now, the final cause of cancer that I want to emphasize, because nobody talks about it, is the role of chance. You'll often, when somebody gets cancer, we always want to consider, well, why did they can't get cancer? What did they do? What were they exposed to? Could it have been prevented? So if only they'd eaten more vegetables. If only they hadn't gone out in the sun. But in fact, by far the biggest determinant of who gets cancer, what kind of cancer they get, how well that cancer responds to treatment, how invasive that cancer is, is chance. 
So chance mutations determine whether or not a cell becomes the founder of a tumor. Um, random mutations determine whether or not tumors become more aggressive. They determine whether tumors become resistant to chemotherapy. And we have no control over these mutations at all. It's entirely beyond our control. So that means that it's probably not worth worrying too much once cancer has happened about tracing the causes because the biggest factor in cancer is genetic bad luck. So what we've done, very briefly, we've discussed genetic factors that affect cancer risk, environmental factors, and the underappreciated role of bad luck. Coming up next, we're going to switch gears and have one lecture where we're trying to take the genetics that you've learned in the course so far and use it to help you make sense of the kinds of genetics terms that are still in common use that you'll perhaps find when you read a genetics textbook. I hope to see you there.